Thanks for tuning in to Modern Hobbies. On this episode, I went to the V-Twin Expo in Cincinnati, Ohio. Yeah, and as you can see behind us, we're at the Motorcycle Dealer Expo in Indianapolis right now. And I'm going to service a couple bikes, get them ready for summer, and go over all that with you so that you can get your bike ready for summer. I also went to Centerville Junior High School's first ever Pinewood Derby race, so we got some of that footage for you. So stay tuned, we got a great episode for you. This week's Modern Hobbies, we're going to the V-Twin Expo in Cincinnati, Ohio. As you can see here at the dealer show, uh, everything that you could possibly want for your motorcycle is here today. Uh, assisting me with uh, some videoing today and uh, interviewing some of the vendors will be my wife, Tracy. And uh, let's go see what we can find today. Uh, one of the first things we came across is a really cool stereo system for your street glide, road glide, or a Turing machine. They actually integrate a iPod into the dash and then hook it into your stereo. Uh, they've got uh, speakers in the tops of the bags. It's a pretty cool setup. Okay, Easy Riders got their set up here at the uh, show. Uh, they weren't just happy to have a booth. They went ahead and brought a full 18-wheeler in and uh, set up their uh, wares for the consumers here at the Dealer Expo. And then we get Tracy enjoying the show. This is uh, where you see some of the... Uh, newest things guys are out there doing. See a little bit of everything here. I think that's the uh, largest front wheel I've seen on a motorcycle. Hi, we're here at the V-Twin Expo at the Karyakin booth and we're here to check out some of their chrome. Uh, they've got chrome foot pegs for uh, just about every machine out there. Uh, you'll be able to find these at your local dealers. All kinds of different uh, handlebar accessories, different foot pegs, running boards. And uh, when your stock Harley isn't enough, uh, Jim's has a 135 cubic inch motor for you. As always, Vance and Hines shows up with a big showing here at the dealer show. One of the largest exhaust pipe manufacturers for the uh, V-Twin industry. And they've got pipes for just about every machine out there. By far, one of the largest vendors at the, uh, for most dealers actually is uh, Drag Specialties. All kinds of accessories available here for your motorcycle. Lucas Oil Girl. Yes, they bring a, a large display here to the Dealer Expo every year. Have uh, V-Twin engines, aftermarket parts for your V-Twin motor, heads, cams, cylinders, cases, cranks, rods, about every part you can imagine. Ooh, I love sparkly, and I think the next thing we might want to do for our bike is to bedazzle. <laughs> you even got things for uh, all the people that like their uh, big tricycle. And here we got a little different uh, take on the Springer front end. Yeah, if you can get a high-tech Springer front end, I guess this would be it. Here we are looking over the Dealer Expo, V-Twin Expo, I should say. As you can see, there's a little bit of everything out there from helmets to tires to Saddlebags, handlebars, about everything you can imagine for your V twin. The 
dealer uh, industry show here in Indianapolis. We're going to go in and see what's new for your motorcycle this year. Some good accessories. You're going to get hit by a car. <laughs> Only uh, dealers can get into the industry show. Media personnel. Uh, we have our passes here from the local motorcycle shop that I work at to get us in the show. How about you two ladies? What do you think about the show? We love it! <laughs> This is Dave with Modern Hobbies. I'm down here with Joe at the Slime Booth with the Modern Hobby Girls, and uh, Joe's going to give us a little intro to his product uh, here at the Dealer Expo. Okay, well, all the motorcycle fans out there, you know, motorcycles are one of the most critical tires you can be commuting on or out there with dirt bikes because there's no spare tire. So Slime is the worldwide leader in flat tire prevention and repair. The secret to our product is that it's liquid. So, girls, you can see here, why don't you give that a spin? Go ahead and spin that thing real hard, faster, 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 faster. Okay, so right now the liquid tire sealant is evenly coating the tread area, waiting for a puncture to happen. And we'll puncture some tires. I'll give this thing a stop, and you can, you can see the sealant moving in there, right? Okay, the black chunks are ground up tire rubber that goes into holes and makes a long lasting flexible plug. There's a lot of questions. How long does it last? Two years. Um, is it safe for tires and wheels? Yes. It's got rust and corrosion inhibitors in there, so once you got it in there, it's actually preventing rust and corrosion on the inside of wheels. So the quad guys and anyone with trailers, that's really important to pr prevent those problems. Okay, so uh, we're going to run. We're, we're going to have you puncture the tire. I'll give you the ice pick. Okay, stab the tire right in the very top there, really hard. Here, pound it in there. Just hit the top of the thing. Let's get it in there. There we go. Okay, pull it out. You put the microphone there, you can hear a little air coming out. What we're going to do is we're going to spin it. Now the hole is down there where the puncture is, and that's where the sealant is. This tire we've punctured 2,000 times since the show last year, and it's still holding air. Um, have you had an aggravating flat tire experience before? Not yet. Okay. Well, you have, people get one every five years, so you want to be prepared. Uh, Garrett's going to show you guys the uh, Moto Spare. Come on over here, girls, and check out the Moto Spare. All right, what we have here is a perfect kit for motorcyclists. It's a compact kit you could keep in a saddlebag or under the seat. It comes with a really powerful compressor and a bottle of slime. So if you get stuck on the side of the road with a puncture flat, you squeeze the bottle of slime in. Each kit comes with multiple connectors, so no matter what kind of bike you have, you can connect it and get going. Um, All right. Okay, we're down here at the battery tender booth with Mike and he's going to explain to us the difference between a battery tender and just the regular battery charger and uh, explain uh, how that operates a little differently. Yeah, a battery tender is a, it's a smart charger. It's a, it's a microprocessor controlled charger. It's really a little computer with one job and that is to, to protect and recharge your battery. What we do is uh, we charge with constant current. This unit, small current, 0.75 amps. This unit, one a little over an amp with an amp and a quarter. You don't need a whole lot of current to recharge a battery. What we do is throw all of the current ne necessary into the battery until the battery is about 80% state of charge. Then we go through and, and address a, uh, put it on a voltage position. That voltage position allows the battery to take whatever current it needs. And then we float the battery indefinitely, which could be six weeks, six months, six days. It'll keep the battery at 13.2 volts, which is full state of charge. Okay. What I found is uh, if you park your motorcycle through the winter and you don't have any kind of uh, battery charger or battery tender or anything on it, uh, the battery will go dead and then uh, it sulfates and, right. the, and the battery ends up uh, being worthless. I, I personally use a battery tender and uh, my experience has been without a battery tender on my motorcycle that I get about a year and a half to two years of life out of a battery. Right. And uh, the last time I 
bought a battery was seven years ago using a battery tender. A battery tender, uh, based on, on studies we've done, will allow a battery to last anywhere from two to four times longer than if you don't use the tender. Um, and in some cases, if a battery, if left on with parasitic loads, will even last maybe just a season. Uh, what ends up happening is that a battery will lose at rest about 1% of capacity per day. After 30 days, your battery is 30% less than what it was just by sitting on the shelf. So a battery tender, when hooked up, uh, will protect your battery, will make it last longer, and will have it ready to go when you're ready to ride. This is Modern Hobbies. We're down here at the uh, Chatterbox booth, uh, seeing what's new for your motorcycle helmet and communication systems this year. Hi there. Um, my name's Ramel. I'm working for Chatterbox. And so today, what I'm going to be showing you guys is called the X1 Slim. The X1 Slim has been added the, in the market for about like four months now, so it's still fairly brand new. Um, with the X1 Slim, it is like our older model. With uh, uh, yeah, I have the older model, and it, it, okay. it works really well. Uh, thank you, thank you. So it is like the older model, but as you can tell from your older model, it is a lot smaller, and it's going to be a lot lighter as well. What kind of range are you getting out of it? With the range with it, it's still the same. It still has that five mile range, even though it is smaller. Uh -huh. And I have personally talked out five miles on my Chatterbox, so it is doable. It doesn't happen all the time, but but uh, in good conditions, you do see five miles out of these things. Yeah. And the last feature that we added here was a built-in FM radio. And oh, so okay. now you have that built-in FM radio. Oh, that's cool. So just in case your MP3 player dies during the ride, hey, you still have a music option. Uh, yeah, if, for some reason that aren't familiar with this, you can plug your... Uh, your iPod or your MP3 player into it so you can listen to music and then it'll automatically cut out when someone starts talking to you. Uh, I happen to have an iPod Touch that's got Bluetooth, so I actually Bluetooth my iPod to my Chatterbox so there's actually no wires in between my Chatterbox uh, and my iPod. Yep, and I almost forgot, the last feature that we added, like what I was saying, it's Vox activated and it's also push to talk We are releasing a wireless push to talk for this model as well. And that would be releasing about maybe in April or so, and okay. so we're still working on we're, we're still working on that. But we will be releasing a wireless push to talk as well. Okay, thanks. Okay, for all you ATVers out there, we stopped into the Gorilla Axle booth, and uh, we're going to take a look and see what they do different than everybody else. Uh, we've been in the market for quite a while now, and. Uh, Right now, we're the only uh, aftermarket ATV manufacturer for CVs that are all American made. All our stuff is heavy duty. It's the top of the line, uh, highest grade materials available to us. And uh, right now, we're the only ones that are doing that, and that's what we like to uh, base our whole product on. Now, now, you offer axles that will fit on just the standard guys' machines. Yes, we do. Uh, not just the machines we see here that are. Uh, uh, this next shot's pretty awesome. booth with Larry Tripp. He'll be telling us a little bit about his manufacturers. Okay, as far as the products we make, we make several different types of hubs and everything is manufactured in the USA as far as the hubs, spokes, nipples. We make everything except for the rims and we do more models than anybody else probably in the world and we do everything in-house as far as colors. You can order and within a day or two we can get pretty much anything out, special order type stuff. And one of our hubs that we're the only one that make in the world is this Cush Drive hub here. It's, um, this one here is unique for a uh, KTM 950 um, dual sport, but we also make that that will work on CRFs, Yamaha, Kawasaki, all the popular models. And it's mainly for supermoto um, uses, but you know, you could obviously use it for dirt or whatever you want. But we also do some ATV parts, but mainly our hubs are our big seller. And we do, like I said, several different kinds. We do lightweight, um, econo type hubs, um, but everything's solid built at 6061. So, uh, Okay, we're down here at the uh, Metzler Tire Booth. Uh, for you V-Twin guys, uh, one of the things that I like uh, is to be able to put a wider tire on my motorcycle, and uh, Metzler seems to be the tire to do that with. Excellent. Actually, we were the one that invented the concept with the custom bikes with the larger rear sizes from anywhere from a 16-inch to an 18-inch rim diameter to a 300-size wide tire. 
We have the custom sizes to fit everything you have. As a matter of fact, we have over 90 sizes of tires in our ME880 line of products. Uh, so I, I had a lot of trouble trying to find tires to fit the application that I wanted to do, and when I started looking, uh, Metzler always seemed to have the tire to do it. Okay, uh, I'm here with Gary. Uh, he kind of helped organize the biker build-off for the dealer expo. Uh, he's going to kind of explain some of the events that uh, happened here and uh, how uh, he got all these bikes here at the show. Well, we got uh, we got hooked up with Bob Kay and Jeff Nager, and uh, I'm I've been pretty active in building bikes and doing bike shows and stuff. So these guys started calling me when they whenever they have a show because I I build bikes and I also am partners in a company called Evil Engineering, which is a belt drive company, and a lot of the custom builders use our drive. So. They were like, can you get some bikes to here? We're short in Cleveland, or we need a couple here. So I I know people all over, so I start making phone calls, and hey, these guys are having this show, in which you know the, the Ultimate Builder Custom Bike Show is a great foundation. Uh, a lot of people go through. I think in Novi, there was 50,000 people went through that show. So when he had this thing here last year, we set up and just did a, a static display with some of our bikes, explained what was going on, try to tell the builders what's happening. And as an example, I won in Detroit last year with my bike and freestyle. It pays $3,000. Then you get to go to the AMD show in Sturgis, and they, they automatically, you're registered to go to that show if you win one of the other shows. So this deal here, you know, when they're trying to build up the, the V-twin part of this show, uh, Bob and Jeff come up with the idea of having some custom bikes. And he calls and told me the deal and what, what, what he could do. and. He's how many bikes can you get, you know? So we ended up, I think, I think I didn't count for sure, but not personally. But I, I there's 18 bikes here. I mean, I hauled in five. Another buddy of mine hauled in like seven, and I, they, there's 18 bikes here that I got talked into coming. You know, Papa Clutch. Uh, you know, he came in from Iowa, and I got uh, people from all over the United States. But we did bring, I think, like 18 Michigan bikes down and put them in the show. And there's three classes. You know, there's the bobber class, and there's the bagger class, and the freestyle class. So cool, cool. We actually got to check out some of his artwork over to Pirelli and Metzler booths, and uh, uh, our hobby girls actually got wrangled into uh, handing out trophies Which, here. Oh, yeah. Was one of you two the ones that was riding the bike? <laughs> yeah, my my. Yeah, you're the one that got in trouble. Yeah, so here I built this tricycle. And it was a last minute deal and, and uh, my painter's grandfather passed away so we didn't really get the paint done, you know. Uh, Chop Docs Choppers and he's got the Sweet Lou over here is his. He painted my Barsley's Rizlon bike, he painted that bagger there, he painted that bagger there, he painted that bagger there. And uh, he, he talked me into painting it and the paint was so wet that uh, uh, Fab Kevin's wife sat on it uh, the day before yesterday and her butt prints are still in the seat. So I told the Metzler guys, you know, as I walked up and one of them sitting on the bike and I have the do not sit on this. And I didn't even, the pedals aren't even tight. When I rode it in, the pedal fell off because I forgot to tighten the bolts up. So I'm like, don't let anybody sit on it, you know. So I come walking up and I look and here's this, this girl just through the intersection on the tricycle faster than I could even oh, ride it. That wasn't us. Oh, that wasn't you guys? <laughs> that wasn't no, us. So I, so I look and here's all the Metzler guys and they're like, oh. Hey, we're here at the uh, Dealer Expo at the Shoei booth. Uh, Going to take a look at the latest thing Shoei's got out in modular helmets. This is the uh, Neotech. It's a brand new modular helmet Shoei just introduced. Uh, it has some very unique industry features in it. As a modular, which has become the most important segment in the motorcycle helmet industry as far as growth, one of the things that they've incorporated is a shield drop-down system. Now, that's not by itself innovative, but what Shoei did, which made it different than any other industry. They were so concerned about the safety of the riders that they didn't want to compromise any of the styrofoam uh, to make room for the shield to slide up. So you notice here they actually raised the shell up so they maintained the full integrity of the styro to give the maximum protection in, uh, in, in the event of an impact. Uh, something that the Chewy's always kind of had going for it is a uh, fit and finish that you don't see in other helmets. Uh, it's definitely one of the more high-end helmets on the market. 
Yeah, they actually develop every helmet from the inside out. Most helmet companies will design a shell, then work down from the fit of it. Shelly actually develops their helmets from the inside, from the fit and the styro, and then build the shell around it. So that's why you get that consistent quality fit in every showy. All right, there you have it from Chewy. All right, taking a little break from motorcycles for a while. I'm down here at the first ever Centerville Junior High School Pinewood Derby event. It's a race, this is the finals. Uh, we got the crowd fired up behind us. We're gonna find out who the winner is tonight. The Boy Scouts have been doing Pinewood Derby racing for years. This is the first time it was brought to Centerville Junior High School, and it may become an annual event. Mr. Lewis, the science teacher, and Mr. Cheeks, the math teacher, decided this would be the easiest hobby to do, and it teaches them a little bit about both math and science. I'm sure the parents had a little bit to do with help building the cars, but uh, each car was made by two students, so they paired off in twos, and work together building the car and I'm sure the parents helped a little also but the uh, cars all have to be five ounces or under and they all have to use the same wheels and axles the Pinewood Derby regulation wheels uh, but other than that you can uh, paint them up any color you want or any shape you wanted uh, this one here was my daughter's car and her friend they built the uh, Shelby Cobra together it's very important how you set your car up on the launch to get it square and straight so it doesn't uh, rub the wheels at the start to slow down the car. I'm scared. I want to win. The track is about 38 feet long. Uh, the actual racing distance is about 36 feet long. Uh, there's a timer and a counter at the end that lets you know who wins. This was the final race of the evening, and there was your winner. The winner was Mason Raider and Jordan Estes. There were ribbons given out for fourth third and second place. There's your second place winners there. They get ribbons and the first place winner gets ribbons and a trophy, although the trophy has to stay at the school. Hey gang, this is Dave with Modern Hobbies. We're down here at Kelly's Kawasaki. We're going to service my Suzuki and my Harley Davidson today. All right guys, we're going to go over a service, getting your bike ready for the summer and getting it serviced. We're going to check the tire pressure. Number one thing neglected on a motorcycle is the tire pressure. Make sure that it's up to snuff there. Uh, we're also going to check our belt tension. Second most thing neglected on a motorcycle. Uh, we're going to go through here and uh, change all of our fluids, starting with the primary fluid. Uh, we're going to change our spark plugs. We're going to make sure our cables are properly adjusted, the clutch and the throttle cables. Uh, clutch cable, you need just a little bit of slack so that it's not dragging down on the pressure plate. And your throttle, you want to make sure that when you pull the throttle and you let go of it, that it returns on its own. That it doesn't require assistance to do that. Uh, we're going to check our front brake pads and make sure that they're wearing evenly. And then we're going to check our front tire pressure, uh, make sure that it's up to manufacturing suggested pressure and then we're going to check and make sure that we don't have any residue on our front fork tubes and uh, now we're going to flip around the other side and go over it on this side gang we're going to check the front brake pads just like we did on the other side check and make sure that our fork seals aren't leaking don't have any residue there we're going to uh, make sure that the brake lever doesn't feel spongy uh, which would indicate uh, air in the line if, it, if there is uh, if it does feel spongy then we're going to bleed those brakes uh, check your throttle, make sure that it will return on its own. Uh, if it doesn't, then you need to either adjust your cables or lube your cables. Um, pull our air filter and clean it, re-oil it, reinstall it. Uh, we already went over, we're going to change the oil and filter. We're going to change our transmission fluid at the same time we're doing our primary fluid. Uh, we're going to check and make sure we don't have any leaks on the rear shock. And we're going to check the brake pads on the rear of the machine, make sure they're wearing evenly. And again, I can't stress this enough, 
Make sure you check your tire pressure. That's probably the number one neglected thing on a motorcycle that I've seen. And then uh, all that's left to do to this machine is wash and wax it and then enjoy the ride. Okay, we're gonna check the front tire pressure on my GSXR. We're gonna check the brake pads on my GSXR. We're gonna check and make sure that we don't have a spongy feel to the brake lever. We'll make sure that the throttle cable will return on its own. Um, we're going to uh, pull the air filter and make sure that it's good and clean. Check for mice nests in there. I've seen, I've seen dozens of uh, sport bikes come in where the mice have built a nest in the air box. Uh, I've seen a couple of them full of dog food. So uh, make sure that you pull your air filter and check before you start your bike up in the spring. You never know what's uh, made a new home in there. We're going to drop our oil, change our oil and filter. Uh, check the rear brakes just like we did the front brakes. Make sure that uh, the lever doesn't feel spongy and that our brake pads are wearing evenly. We're going to check that tire pressure and make sure that it's up to snuff. And then we're going to make sure that uh, this exhaust system is a, it's a Yoshimura slip together system. So we're going to make sure that we have all those springs in place uh, so that this system doesn't come loose on us while we're riding it. And let's flip around here to the other side and see what we got to do there. Okay, gang, we're going to check the front brake pads, make sure they're wearing evenly on the left side of the machine. We're going to make sure that we don't have any residue on our fork seals up here. Check our clutch cable, make sure that we have the proper amount of slack in the cable that it's not uh, causing the clutch to slip by putting pressure on the pressure plate. Uh, we're going to check our coolant level on the reservoir tank, make sure that it's in good shape. And we're going to check our chain tension and make sure that the chain is properly adjusted. Uh, this chain I'm not going to worry too much about. We're replacing the chain and sprockets on this machine this year. And like I said, we're going to check the tire pressure. Number one neglected thing on a motorcycle, tire pressure. Makes them handle funny, makes the tires wear funny. Uh, definitely want to check your tire pressure every couple times you ride. And that is getting my Suzuki ready for summer. Hey guys, I just want to take a second to thank Kelly for letting us use his shop today. And uh, we told you that uh, we had a prize for you at the end of the show. And the first person to go on our YouTube account, tell us how many times they punctured that tire at the slime tire booth or slime sealant booth, uh, wins this uh, slime moto spare. It's got a little compressor and a tube of slime, uh, all the fixtures to uh, get it put in your tire and get some air in your tire and get you back on your way. Uh, so go to our YouTube account at Modern Hobbies TV on YouTube. Tell us how many times we punctured that tire. Thanks for tuning in to this episode of Modern Hobbies. I hope you enjoyed the show. Make sure you tune in next episode. We have archery and all kinds of cool hobbies for you. And I want to take a second here to uh, thank all the vendors for taking time out of their busy schedule and uh, thank Kelly for letting us use the shop. You know, I was amazed at just how interested the modern hobby girls were in the Motorcycle Dealer Expo. I couldn't believe how much uh, they were into the whole thing. It just, it just blew my mind that two girls of that age uh, really got into the show like they did. It was awesome.